Coming up today on This Is True Really News, Arafat Amin Tamal. If you like Arafat the way I like Arafat, please like, subscribe, and follow This Is True Really News. What? What? One of two things. Yes? You either don't like Arafat, not the one I'm thinking of. Oh, it's not that Arafat. It's Arafat oh. Amin Tamal. Okay. He's a 23-year-old student at a medical college. Otherwise, Air Kent doesn't have fat. Yeah. <laughs> In any case. And you regulars? That'd be an Italian. Like, but if you had heavy air, it'd be the Arafat. I, I understand. Took you a second to it, didn't it? Yeah, I did. Ding, ding, um, ding. <laughs> it actually did. <laughs> but you are in any case, hey, you're a regular, please hit like. It helps the algorithm send things to more people so we can in, sort of... We don't know in, why. We want it to in, big in the audience. Now, if you have something a little more detailed, just send it to us in email, TITR at netradio.network. Thank that would you. Be wonderful and most generous of you. This is True Really News with Scott Combs and Tony Vercanis. All the news you're about to hear is true. Really? As far as you know. So, Pinea County, Florida deputies are pleading with the public to stop calling them about manatees in canals and shorelines along the Gulf Coast. Last summer, apparent, according to Fox TV, was apparently a, a fine year for the manatee. People think they are in distress because they're swimming in herds and thrashing about. <laughs> because they're swimming in herds and thrashing Ching about. about. Yes. But officials stress that they are not in any real distress. Well, there is some stress, I might add, but it's the kind of stress they're kind of looking for. Yeah. Let's just say it's pickup time in old Pinea County, Florida for the manatees. And the women yeah. manatees seem to be just fine with it. The sheriff's office explained that it's just mating time. And if you if you see this on their Facebook post, it says, if you see this, please don't call. <laughs> we can assure you they're more than fine. Yeah. <laughs> see, they're way more subtle about it than we are. Walk proud, manatees. Manatees actually mate in herds, you know, like the Playboy mansions. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, yeah. if you see people yelling and thrashing about at a Playboy mansion. Yeah. Investigate it first, but you probably don't have to call the 911. No, just call them. Just take some pictures so everybody can. Well, there will be pictures anyway sooner or later. Yeah, that's probably true, yeah. Videos. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) Film, boy, are you old. (laughs) Arafat Amin Tamal, a 23-year-old student at a medical college in Siraj Ganj. Siraj Ganj. Northwestern Bangladesh. He got into an argument with his teacher. You can't doctor, even pronounce my old neighborhood. Great. <laughs> Dr. Sharif. Hmm. While undertaking an oral exam. During the exam, Dr. Sharif produced a gun. Pointed oral it at exam. the student and shot him in the right leg. You shot me last time. No, she shot you last time. Yeah, it was over a completely understandable misunderstanding the bullet reportedly hit mr amin's mobile phone in the pocket of his trousers which spared him life-threatening injuries because if you get the femoral artery bleed out yeah according to bad uh, according to the bangladeshi newspaper the daily star quoting the police according to the dhaka tribune there were 45 students in the class when the alleged incident happened they rushed to help locked the teacher in a room and called police Police seized his gun as well as a second pistol, 81 rounds of ammunition, four magazines. How many students do you have? <laughs> two knives and 10 daggers. And a uh, partridge in a pear tree, which they found in his bag. Par- partridge was not very happy. No. The incident has shocked, shocked, I say, Bangladesh, and sparked widespread condemnation that the teacher was suspended from his position two days after the incident. Suspended. Hang on, let me. Two days later. Let me. So, two days to think about it. And then they suspend him. Huh. Where is this again? 
Bangladesh. I'm not going there. We should be teaching there, dude. <laughs> That's true. Apparently they don't fight for anything. Biggest problem is I have Israeli made handguns. So Yeah, that wouldn't go over. Mm -hmm. In a stunning, I say stunning stroke of genius, the Alpha and Omega Funeral Home. That's an interesting name when you think about it. It's not yeah. how to name it. The Alpha and Omega Funeral Home in Awachapan, El Salvador. Oh, sure. okay. Okay. Started offering Barbie themed coffins last year, according to the New York Post. Is this like the coffin maker who will who will do a rocket ship if you want one or I hope not. <laughs> With the movie Summer Success and Oscar Failure, which I think we're all pretty happy with, Undertaker Isaac Villegas, Villegas, Viega, Isaac said that they've been swamped with orders and have sold out the hot pink caskets. Baby. Now, I wonder if they've been spray painted. They come in formal length and short short? And or <laughs> repainted, or if they're just doing them in one of those wraps like they do cars. I don't want to know. Viega said we wanted a promote the pink coffin as it became a trend yeah. of the 40 people who inquired about it. We have already closed a contract with at least 10 new clients. Similarly, eh, Ecuador funeral home is offering a Barbie house coffin. So you can rest like Barbie <laughs> in a box. Yeah. Okay. Dead. That's about right. Yeah. They put plastic on the front of it and you Sit there. Yeah. They, you suppose they plant you this way then? So yeah, they hang, you, they, they hang you on the wall at Target. One man... <laughs> eh, it wouldn't be the worst thing Target's done. One yeah. manufacturer gushed about their product. This coffin with its striking bright pink color represents the spark and energy of those unforgettable moments they lived. One El Salvadoran commentator conceded that, you know, eternal rest doesn't look so bad anymore. They're still dead. What do they care about the unforgettable moments they led? Exactly. And it's, it's going to be buried. Funeral correct? ain't for the dead person. It's going to be buried. It's going to either be buried in ground or put in tomb. Yeah. So who the hell is going to see this to understand the great energy and spark of those unforgettable moments? And when all the people who remember it are are dead, yeah. then it's just gone forever. And ever. They only live on in memories. You know, and what if what if your primary energy in in life was coffee? Do they grind you up and st stick you in a cup? Well, Folgers, crystals, Folgers crystals—they could flash freeze the grindings. The best part is, who was it that was Christina Aguilera on the Tonight Show? Yeah, Jimmy Fallon does the thing where he has them imitate other artists doing. Oh yeah, share yeah. share singing the Folger jingle. Oh yeah. She was amazing. Oh, that sounds like fun. Man. I listened to it and I thought, okay, I got to hear it one more. So I turned her back, right? And I shut my eyes. And like, yeah, that's Cher. Yeah, that would work. <laughs> she did a great job. Oh, I was impressed. This from Quora Questions from a guy named Matthew. The question was, have you ever caught a coworker in a compromising position? How did everyone in involved react? And what did you do? Many years ago, I was a stage manager in shows. Not I, but a former colleague of mine told me a story where he was working. <clears throat> Wouldn't that be a former colleague of I? Former colleague of. Not I, but a former colleague, a colleague of, I. of I. Yeah, I'm going to go with that. Not mm -hmm. I, but a former colleague of EYE told me a story of when I... he was working in West End theaters. And I'm assuming the. Uh... That would be London's West End, I'm guessing. Yeah, oh, yeah. And I can never keep them straight. Are... East End is called the midwife. West End is the longest murder thing that Agatha Christie wrote. But isn't is the West End the posh end? Oh yeah. Oh okay. So the East End are all the boys, mm -hmm. you know, coming mm -hmm. to the West End to look for girls. West End girls. Yeah, West End girls. Uh... One time he was working as crew on a West End play with two very well known stars. The Bell actor Gladys. The, the actor was the archetypal British thespian with a booming voice. Well, that's only about three or four hundred thousand actors in Britain. Right? It's equally at home on film as on stage, as in Shakespeare. 
The actress, somewhat his junior, was well-known in film and television, but fairly new to the big stage. The actor had taken this young lady under his wing and was helping her with her performance, you know, technique and such. And in a bit of foreshadowing, diction. One evening, following a show when the theater was deserted, my friend was checking around backstage and noticed a light had been left on in one of the dressing rooms. Hubba hubba zoot zoot. As he opened the door to turn off the light, he was confronted with the actress bent over the dressing table with the actor, trousers round his ankles, mid thrust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blah, 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 blah. He saw the look of horror uh. on the actress's face reflected in the dressing mirror and shouted out, in shock, effing hell, sorry. Without stopping, the actor bellowed, would you mind not swearing in front of the lady? That's British. Well, that takes out Sir Ian. <laughs> right? Yeah. <laughs> and it was years ago, so... Yeah, so it yeah. could have been a lot of them. Who, I, I, early... Hmm. Well done, sir. You know what Judy Dench used to do to one of her friends when they were mm, on stage? Mm -mm. Um, she would be off stage, and her... Hey, hey. That's what? Dame Judy Dench. Dame Judy Dench. And you know her as this sort of proper, you know, she was. Uh, She's a badass DA on yeah. Law and Order for a Well, in time. the James Bond series, she was M for Queen. M, yeah. You know, and she's this, you know, very tough. Well, what she would do to one of her friends. She also played a British traitor in a movie. Oh, interesting. Red Joan or something. Okay. And anyway. uh, she would. One of her friends was explaining, and Judy sitting on the couch turning all kinds of red. Says, yeah, she used to get off stage right in my line of sight and pretend to being that she was being pleasured from behind while I was on stage acting. Actors are a weird bunch. Yep. Yeah. Anyway, as you were saying. Was I? Yes. Hmm. It was early. You know, I just had the weirdest thought, and I'm not sharing it. Early on July 28th, Thornton, Colorado police were called out about a stolen car, KKTV reports. As the officers gathered the information needed, the suspect, 36-year-old Julian Fernandez, turn, returned to the scene. So that is true. Criminals returned to the scene of the crime. Wow. Dude. Is that, is that like a rule? Do you have to sign a contract? Why is he reinforcing stereotypes like that? I don't know. You would think... Well, I think well, PETA will hear of this. So he returns to the scene, but then Fernandez, quote, quickly ran on foot from the area and out of sight, according to the police. While they watched, the man jumped over a security fence and started climbing a, a 320-foot radio tower. Well, that's a dumb idea. Well, there are only two ways to go on a radio tower. <laughs> Did he survive this? He eventually reached the top, where the little red blinky light is. Yeah. And he stayed up there for 12 hours, damn it. <laughs> because, <laughs> because the cops are going to go away. Right? As, what do you say? We've been here for 12. Nah, I mean, but I got to get home. Yeah, he started peeing on us. You know, that I mean, kind of thing. Who's going to... The kids are already at the city. Yeah. He eventually reached the top. He stayed there for 12 hours. Crisis negotiators trying to reason him down. He just climbed a 320-foot water tower to get away from police for stealing a car. Yeah. At one point, are you going to reason with him, really? Firefighters eventually had to go up the tower and bring him down. My guess is he got up there and was like, I can't come down. It, oh, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You know, it's so funny. Um, now, By the way, if you want a really good job, you want to change lights on those things. When, when you and Rob and I and my wife went to get, went to Mexico. We didn't go to Chichen Itza. No. Um, but when Paul and I went, we went to Chichen Itza. And there's a temple there where, um, you know, a lot of people like to climb up and have their pictures taken. And they're starting to limit the number of people who can go up every year because it's actually wearing people down. Thank wearing people down? Well, I mean, wearing the steps down. No, and you were right the first time. What our guide said was, hey, if you have problems with heights, 
walk up 10, 20 steps and turn around, take a look, because the steps are also meant for those little teeny tiny feet. And my size yep. 12s, bump, bump, bump. yeah, I'd have to walk, you know, like this to get up them. So like normal. So I went up four steps, turned around and went, no effing way. I just walked right back wow. there. This <laughs> was can, fun. Yep. And Paul went all the way to the top. And then he went, well, he has dainty girl feet anyway. So <laughs> and he goes, he goes, can I say that? Or is that? Yeah. Oh yeah. He has that. To, well, if the dainty girl is a penguin, um, he's up there and he goes, now, how am I supposed to get down? <laughs> he actually had to use the rope they provided. Well, it was a chain, but yeah. he used he the just, chain. Do the butt thing like my grandson does. Not down that thing. If you lose it, you're going all the way to the bottom. Yeah. They are so steep. And, and there's so got to be a camera there somewhere. Oh, baby. It was awful. I couldn't have. We're going viral, Martha. <laughs> Look at this moron. <laughs> He's going to be wearing his butt for a hat. Soon. This is True Really News. Send email to TITR at netradio.network.